My name is Jessie. I am a proud woman who did my research and made informed decisions and conscious choices during my journey into parenthood for the first time, which ended in a beautiful water birth at home with no medical assistance, only my husband, professional doula, and yes, our two dogs. I have been disheartened to see the Daily Telegraph took a screenshot of our birth, took my words out of context, and that major television stations and digital and print media then ran with it without contacting me first to verify any information. Among other things, it has been purported that I have given false expectations of birth. And out of all of this, this is what I find the saddest. That a realistic expectation our society has of birth is on your back, legs up, getting yelled at to push, stirrups, intervention, medication, and often surgery. The majority of the reports you have seen and heard are one-sided and contain false or outdated information. I would like the opportunity to clear up some of this inaccurate fear-mongering information and tell you a bit about our decision to free birth at home. This 60-second snippet of our beautiful free birth was originally posted by Blissful Herb's Instagram account in the context of showing women that, despite what we're led to believe, birth doesn't have to be a traumatic experience that you can have complete control of your choices. This is our movie that has been dragged through the mud, that has been the basis of false news, that has been used as clickbait and the subject of huge debate thanks to an inaccurate and uninformed article by the Daily Telegraph and subsequently countless other publications and online platforms who have all picked up on Annabelle Hennessy's article which paints me as irresponsible, uneducated, and reckless. I've been invited to be interviewed by a number of news shows. However, after my words were taken out of context and misquoted, I refuse to put myself in a situation where that can happen again. So please accept this as my statement. Immense gratitude, though, to the journalists who have interviewed me and produced balanced, accurate, and sensible articles instead of buying into the sensationalism. I was contacted by Daily Telegraph reporter Annabelle Hennessy, and in the short time I was given to respond, I answered her questions as comprehensively as possible. I cited numerous studies and current evidence-based research, all of which I'm happy to provide now, to counter the limited and outdated studies she quoted to me, particularly in relation to the risks of home births and water births. However, she chose not to use these, and the comments she did include were taken out of context and clearly reinforced her bias on the issue. She also provided false information that I'm a mummy blogger and had posted the video to my own social media promoting home birth, which are both untrue. I do not have a blog or a social media following that anywhere near constitutes me as an influencer. Home births and water births are definitely not for everyone and I have never promoted that they are. Some of the questions she asked me. Are you aware of research published in the Medical Journal of Australia which suggests that babies born at home births are seven times more likely to die of complications than those born in hospitals? Given this, do you think it is responsible to be promoting home births online? What she failed to include in her article my response, which was the seven times study, is from 2010. It is based on South Australian only births from 1991 to 2006 and included both high risk and low risk women. She failed to use information from a more recent study that I provided her with, which determined this statistic to be 1.7 per 1,000 births. She also failed to include that high quality evidence about low risk pregnancies indicates that place of birth had no statistically significant impact on infant mortality. She asked, why was your dog in the bath with you during your home birth? Do you think this is safe? I mean, really, are you serious? As much as I love my gorgeous pets, they were not in the bath with me. This question alone discredits what you have written and shows how blinded you are into not looking very hard to find your research and facts to write your story on. She asked, how do you respond to concerns from multiple obstetricians that water immersion poses multiple risks, including drowning? Given these comments, do you think it's responsible to be promoting water births online? Annabelle, you did not print this, but water birth is an option for birth all over the world. 
World-renowned hospitals, as well as small hospitals and birthing centres, offer water birth as an option to low-risk patients. Recent studies find no data that supports safety concerns over water birth. Women increasingly are seeking settings for birth that honour their ability to give birth without intervention. Water birth increases their chances of attaining the goal of a natural birth without interventions that can lead to stored labours, stress and emergency C-sections. Mothers in Australia are reporting that their obstetricians are not informing them of these benefits. Given that the most recent research-based evidence shows no additional harm to babies from water birth and benefits to the mothers, in answer to your question, no, there is nothing irresponsible about communicating this. I think healthcare providers are failing their duty if they do not provide mothers with this information, as it's necessary to enable them to make informed decisions about their healthcare. My question to you is, do you think it's responsible to print such ill-informed views from people the public have been taught to trust? Important things to remember are there is no evidence of increased odds for any death or harm to babies with water birth. There is high quality evidence that indicate that for low-risk pregnancies, the place of birth had no statistically significant impact on infant mortality. She did not ask me what led to you birthing at home. Our decision to free birth was not taken lightly and was based on numerous factors. My husband and I live over an hour away from the nearest hospital with a maternity ward. So I initially began to prepare for our potential home birth so that we were equipped mentally, physically and medically. My mother's labour with me was one hour and 20 minutes so I knew I needed to prepare for this scenario. Unfortunately, we have no access up here to an independent midwife, unlike our southern cities, who have both independent midwives and government-funded home birth programs. During our antenatal classes and one-on-one -on -one meetings at the private hospital, I realised that hospital policies could not accommodate my birth wishes. It was very important to me to have an intervention-free birth, however, they could not allow a water birth, insisted on a cannula, and had time frames for how labour should progress, etc. And this is because of the hospital policies. My extensive research into a home birth was heavily focused on actual evidence and the benefits of trusting your body, allowing the endorphins and adrenaline to act as pain relievers and for these hormones to progress birth. Practicing hypnobabies to stay focused and avoid external destruction. Birthing in water, evidence shows a shorter labor and less use of pain medication or use of synthetic oxytocin among many other benefits. The amazing support of my incredible and very experienced doula, Shelley Langford. Wanting to be in control, I knew that if I felt safe and supported in a loving environment, that the birth would be easy. And it was. It was easy and it was pain-free. I was considered low risk. I did have plans in place in case we needed to transfer to hospital and the hospital was aware I was in labour. I was assisted by my doula, Shelley, who I felt calm and supported by and whom I trusted having supported many mums during bush births, free births, home births and hospital births. With her experience combined with her training, I felt confident that if the situation unfolded, that I would need assistance, she would make sure that my emergency birth plan would be followed and carried through. I'm allergic to painkillers and happy gas, so pain management was never an option. While we had always planned to labour at home, which the midwives were aware of, as it turned out, our baby was born 23 minutes after her waters broke. I could not have made it to hospital. Ultimately, we were prepared, informed, educated, and made the right choice for our circumstances. Why is it that had our birth been an accidental free birth, that I, or more likely my husband, would be praised a hero? Why that it was our choice has it suddenly become reckless, selfish, unintelligent and un uneducated? As a result of the Daily Telegraph article and the subsequent coverage on the Today Show, the project and the rest, I have received a deluge of correspondence from other mothers who have welcomed the conversation around free births. I sincerely thank you for your supportive, intelligent and positive comments. Along with this though, I've also been accused of following a fad, looking for fame, being naive, uninformed, uneducated, selfish, 
Someone even wrote, I bet she's one of those ones that breastfeeds in public. Hi, yeah, I do. Sorry. Some comments. Who wants to watch that? Gross. Disgusting. I was worried that the dog would try eat the baby or the placenta. Stupid couple. There are thousands more. I just want everyone to know that although cruel, I'm not hurt by these words. I know they come from fear. They come from the belief that births are a medical emergency that need to be managed. I honestly don't know why our little birth has gained so much attention. I have done nothing new by giving birth or having a baby outside of a hospital setting. As a society, we need to be asking why the number of free births in Australia are increasing and why women feel disenfranchised with the current maternity care options. Approximately 40 maternity units have closed in rural Queensland over the last few years. Some women are having to drive 300 to 500 plus kilometres to get access to quality care. Lack of services has reached crisis point. Less than 20% of women in Australia have access to midwifery continuum of care. Approximately a third of women describe their birth as traumatic. To get a truly balanced perspective, I would urge the media to interview those who are attending water births and home births on a regular basis, such as highly experienced midwives like Hannah Darlin or Jo Hunter. Our 60 second clip that has been circulating social media recently is an educational and intimate look into what a physiological birth with no intervention can be like. I fully support medical knowledge and research and understand that home births and water births aren't for everybody. But what concerns me is how misinformed some people, including those we are taught to trust, are. Women are made to feel that they do not have the ability to birth without the assistance of doctors. Women have the legal right and autonomy over their body and baby during pregnancy, labour and birth. So many women don't know this and feel they didn't or don't have a choice, but they absolutely do. We need women to know this. I have received so many messages from women thanking me for showing them that birth does not have to be feared, that it doesn't always have to be a traumatic event that you just survive. You can enjoy it. Women have told me the video has inspired them to trust their bodies and research their options. Having Marley at home was peaceful and the single most incredible experience of my life. It is a day we look back on with such love. It was both peaceful and powerful, humbling and empowering. My wish is for all women to do their research on pregnancy and birth and have a full understanding of all their choices. And for all Australian women to have access to a doula, as I did.